one of the ways that, believe it or not, you're probably wasting money in your business is investing in too many networking groups or communities. I know. I always say that networking groups are some of the best ways to get new business, best ways to meet people, best ways to connect with others. But there are diminishing returns by doing too many of them. And I'm going to kind of articulate for you now how you can decipher which ones are good for you, where you should be investing your money and time, and where you should probably be saying no to some of these communities. So number one, you want to be considering, hey, does this community have my ideal client in it? And before you think it's only for pitching, the main reason you want to be surrounded by your ideal client is because you want to be able to embrace their messaging, be around their language. You know, when you go to a foreign country, when you go to another state even, you start hearing the accents. And next thing you know, you're kind of thinking with those accents. You're repeating things back. You're parroting what you're hearing. And it's so much easier to do that when you're surrounded by your ideal client because then you can actually start using the words that they use more often. You're going to start embracing their vocabulary and it will make your messaging and your marketing so much better if you can be surrounded by your ideal client more often. So number one, you want to think about in this community, will it have my ideal client all over the place where I can interact with them? And of course, if you happen to win business by being in it, even better. You want to make sure that there's a return on your investment and from a financial standpoint, and as just a benefit for your marketing. The number two thing you want to keep in mind is will you be able to add consistent value, consistent value in that community? And that is probably the most important thing that I think about when I look at joining different masterminds, communities, and networks. Can I add value? And can I do it consistently? Will I be known for adding value in this community? That is a really key factor because You should never be asking for anything in that community unless you've given three times as much, maybe even more. And if for you to show up and add value, people will start associating you with that value. It will help enhance your brand. If you're going to go into one of these communities and simply take, 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 and just basically show up and not be present, then you're really not going to get much of a benefit out of it. So what I recommend doing is really establishing, can you add value? And here's how you can measure that or you can decide if this is for you. I would go into your calendar, go into your Asana, your ClickUp, your Trello, and put in a task, put in a reminder to go into that community, interact, and add value. Answer a couple of questions. Answer two questions for every question you ask, okay? Ask questions that you know experts will be able to chime in on. And just comment and add value, cheer people on, and root for people in the community. If you can't do all of those things consistently, then you're not going to get the huge benefit out of it. So what I recommend doing is keeping your commitment limited to the number of communities that you're in, but then really showing up big in each of the ones that you do. So being selective about the communities you join, and then really, really milking it for what you can in terms of the interactions you get, the quality of connections, and the association people will have with your brand. Number three, this is also really important. Is this community comprised of people who have something that you want? If this has a bunch of people in it that are aspirational to you, maybe you're the little fish in the big pond. I love those rooms because it really can help you expand. It can help you have this mindset of expansion and make you want to go further, go bigger, and expand your goals. I was recently in several rooms where this happened where I thought I had big goals, and then I met people who have two more zeros on all of their numbers than I do. And I said, wow, I'm not dreaming big enough. And I want to be in more rooms like this with people who can really stretch me and can really challenge me into those positions. So if you're joining a network, you really want to have an expansive network. You want to have people who will challenge you to do better, be bigger. And that's a really important element. So I would say you have to be adding value. You have to be expanding your network in terms of who you're surrounding yourself with. And you should be able to gain a lot of exposure to your ideal client in these communities as well if you really want to get your bang for your buck when it comes to investing. And you really have to establish, is the investment that I'm going to make in this community going to be worth it in terms of business, in terms of network? You know, how will I define success? This is another factor in establishing uh, whether or not you want to join a network or community is, will I be able to generate a return? And what does that look like? What does success look like? Measure it. Measure the success and realize that 
I will feel successful and I will find this community to be worthwhile if XYZ happens. I make XYZ money. I, you know, have this many connection calls. If I expand my network by this many people, if I find this type of person or my next hire, or I'm able to uh, accomplish XYZ goal. You really want to go in with an intention to make sure that you're more successful at accomplishing that and make sure that everyone knows what you're intention is, knows what your goal is, so they can help you accomplish it. Be fully transparent with why you're there and what you want to achieve in that group, and you're more likely for it to happen.